Hey guys, all right, so the first thing I want you to do is decide whether you are going to do the cat or the dog. And I actually am gonna have you stop this video, figure out which one you're gonna do, and go use the last video to help you redraw your cat or dog. I chose cat, but you can choose whichever you want. I'm actually a dog person, but I just happen to enjoy drawing this cat, so that's why I chose cat. So again, stop my video, come back to this, and go draw your cat or dog, and you are drawing on the thickest paper that you have. This is our tag board paper, and it's just a nice, strong art paper. So whatever the thickest paper that you have in your kit is that doesn't have the texture. We don't need watercolor paper. We want the thickest, the smooth paper that you've got in your kit, and that's what we're going to draw on. So go ahead and draw your cat or dog, uh, and then come back to my video. Okay, so again, I chose the, the cat, and I'm actually going to have you go back over your sketchy drawing and kind of smooth everything out. We are eventually going to trace over everything, either in Sharpie or we have one other option. So we don't have to worry about keeping our pencil super, super light. So we can go ahead and press a little harder, smooth out our lines a little bit so that we can see everything. I'm gonna go ahead and get this out of the way. Hopefully you enjoy drawing your cat or your dog. I think these are a nice, fun drawing and it's great for learning how to draw and think about animals because it breaks it down into shapes for you guys. Romero Brito was pretty famous or is still pretty famous for those just simple, bold shapes and colorful, colorful patterns and paintings. I made my bow tie a little bigger this time because remember in my demo video in the practice, I noticed that I made it a little smaller and I wanted to make it larger. And I did change up the tail a little bit too. I thought it looked goofy that I left it kind of pointy, so I rounded it out on the tip over here. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and take my eraser and just clean up any extra lines that I just don't need anymore. Now that you've got your thicker, darker line to follow, you should be good to go. And you can always redraw something if you need to. That's the best part about art, right? And a pencil. Okay. So what we are going to do today, and you can kind of reference my original images, is we are going to split up our painting a little bit. We're going to add in some lines, and then we're also going to add in some patterns. So we're, we're going to take patterns from both of these. We don't want to copy Romero Brito exactly how he did it. So we're going to take inspiration from his drawings for our own. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put this on top, and we'll kind of talk about each one as we go. So I can take patterns from the dog and put them on here. I can take patterns from the cat and put them on here. It doesn't matter. Okay. So I'm going to find some different places to split up my drawing. Okay. And that could be background and foreground, but I'm going to go ahead and start in the background area by my legs. And I'm just going to make some lines. So this one I chose to make kind of directly off of the face. This one was just kind of random down here. So I want you to pick like five places to add in lines and they can go through your cat or dog a little bit. Let's see. So I've got one, two, three, four. I need at least one more. I think I'm gonna pick up here. And just come down this way a little bit. And then I want you to pick two more places that you can kind of cut off in your inside of your animal, so just inside. So I'm gonna do one there, 
And then I'm going to do one on the um, bow tie a little bit. Uh, do I want to go straight or do I want that way? I'll go that way. Okay. So we've already kind of broken up our drawing into different sections. So we've got specific sections now. So now we get to add our patterns, okay? So we have we talked about line, right, in our printmaking assignment so that we could, now we can talk about patterning, okay? And we can lay out different um, lines to make different patterns. So I'm going to go ahead and make, let's see, I love polka dots. So I'm going to go ahead and make polka dots up here. We want to have some go off the page so it looks like the pattern just keeps going. And you can use whatever patterns you want. So if you don't like polka dots, that's completely fine. But I'm stopping when I get to one of those lines. So that's a new section. So now I want to do something different. I'm going to do stripes over here. Okay, so I did some stripes, and what if I want to do um, kind of like hills, or as we call them, like wavy lines or hills, either way. And I want to keep my patterns pretty simple and bold. I don't want them to um, get super detailed or anything like that. Okay. So I just added a leg there. And we're not going to add patterns absolutely everywhere. That's not necessary. Um, let's see. What other ideas do we have over here? So we've got lots of polka dots, stripes. We can repeat patterns. There's waves. Um, there's even like part of a flower. So I like the idea of a flower. So I'm going to add in big petal shapes down here. And it would go off the edge of the page. I'm almost using the toe as like the center of the petal. And let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna balance out the polka dots that I put up here, and I'm gonna put in some more. All right, that looks pretty good. And I should probably do something to the bow tie. I do kind of like this checkerboard look, but I'm going to make it bigger. So I'm going to make almost like a tic-tac-toe board. And then I know that I can shade in when I color later, like a checkerboard more. Let's see. I like the idea of just like these kind of line patterns. So maybe I will add in... Trying to think where needs one more than the other. Um, I think this ear needs something. So I'm just kind of using two lines in a circle to kind of make my own pattern up here. Okay. And maybe I need something down here, but something a little bigger. Maybe I'll just add stripes again and just have them go a different direction. There, I think that works. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven areas of pattern. Okay, that sounds about right, but it's you're going to go more by look. Okay, you really want... It to be filled, but not overwhelming. We don't want to put a pattern absolutely everywhere. We do want some areas just to stay solid color when we go to color. Um, we want to make sure that we can still see everything. Everything stands out good. I think we're all set. I think the only thing I'm going to do is I might add a little pattern to my tail. I might add in the same pattern I just did on the ears or ear, I should say. So don't be afraid of repeating patterns. That helps tie it all together. Okay? All right, I'm pretty pleased. So hopefully your cat or your dog 
okay? Got filled up nicely, but not overly filled. So for my dog friends, don't forget you can, you have different sections on the head that you could do. You could do the ears different. Um, so really play with that. But simple patterns, simple, 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 big, bold, ready to be colored, just like Romero Bruno. Good job, guys.